You're watching Silver News Daily. Subscribe for more. Did you know that silver is about to experience the biggest price surge in over a decade? Industry insiders are saying 2024 will mark the start of a historic squeeze. And one man, Sean Kunkan, has the inside scoop on exactly why this could happen. If you think this is just another market prediction, think again. Silver supply is rapidly drying up and demand is about to explode in ways you won't believe. Stay with me because by the end of this video, you'll understand why experts believe silver could be the investment opportunity of a lifetime. Um, we've had two moments, uh, 1980 and 2011, where you know we went into a bull market, but it was very short-lived. And so if you look at that last 100-year period, investment demand for silver has been at 30% of the silver universe. You know, the other 70% is going to industry. So during a bear market, we've had a 30% investment demand. During the bull market, what drove the bull market was uh, investment demand. It was investors going out, you know, it was on the back. If you go back to 1980, uh, the Gold was running from $35 an ounce to over $800 an ounce. The, the Hunt brothers quartered the market and the price of silver spiked. It was not based on uh, photography or the big industrial components and usages of the time. In 2011, the price spike, the move from $4 to $49. Again, it was on the back of investment demand. So my point here is if in the last 100 year period, 98% of the time we've been in a bear market. OK, and during that bear market, we've had 30 percent of the silver market consumed by investors. But we've shown you that when we get into a bull market for precious metals and we are unequivocally in a bull market for gold, it's hitting record highs in all currencies. And we know silver's got beta and we know silver will outperform. It has every time it's coming. It's inevitable. But there's one difference, Jesse, this time. And the difference is, by the end of 2025, so this is 15, 16 months from now, industry is going to consume all of mined silver. So the 850 million ounces that we mine as an industry on an annual basis is going to get 100% consumed by the growing industrial demand for silver. So in the last three years, we've had 250 million ounce deficits for silver already. Industry is growing usage. Investment demand will come. It's been 30% during a bear market. It's going to be a lot higher than that. It'll be two, three, four times that during a bull market. And so we're setting up for the greatest squeeze in the history of silver. And it will unfold by the end of 2025. But we are already seeing as, you know, going back to 2022, 2021, 2023, the quarter million ounce deficit is here and it's growing and it could be 500 million ounces this year. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't always believe in the institutes and the reporting that we're getting. If it's if it's, is it accurate? Because, um, you know, really the you know the, the market is not as transparent as it should be and it's changing you know with with some of like the shanghai metals exchange and uh, you know we're starting to see you know more price you know the the paper price the digital price represent more of the physical market but it's it's still got a long way to go so if you want me to put a calendar on it jesse I think that, uh, look, we've seen the price move from $16 to $30 over the last couple of years. I think we're going to see a dramatic move before we get to December 2025. I think the price is going to get way ahead of that. Is it $40? Is it $50? I think as we go into 2026, we will be trading at all-time highs. Now, let's talk about one of the biggest indicators that a silver rally could be just around the corner. The gold to silver ratio. Right now, the ratio sits at 8 to 6 to 1. What does that mean? It means it takes 8 to 6 ounces of silver to buy just 1 ounce of gold. Historically, this ratio has averaged around 54 to 1. And at times, it was as low as 16 to 1. So silver is looking massively undervalued compared to gold. 
This is a huge red flag for savvy investors because a high ratio like this tends to signal a buying opportunity for silver. And here's where it gets really interesting. Some experts believe the ratio should naturally be much lower, closer to 16 to 1 based on how much silver is actually available compared to gold on Earth. The big question is, why is silver so cheap right now, and why do many believe this undervaluation can't last? Well, when the gold-to-silver ratio starts to correct itself, we typically see silver prices spike, and with industrial demand skyrocketing, a correction may come sooner than you think. This means silver has the potential to outperform gold, offering massive upside for investors who recognize this window of opportunity. But here's the kicker. The longer this ratio stays high, the bigger the squeeze when the market finally adjusts. So, what are you waiting for? We'll dive into what's driving silver's price next. And trust me, the reasons might just shock you. I'm, I'm limited to my 43 years on this planet and my 23, my 20 years in, the, in, in, in investing in mining. Um, I've, I'm limited to my own experience. It resembles 2007 a little bit to me, where you had uh, stock exchanges, real estate prices, and gold all trading at a pretty healthy uh, value. Um, and it really wasn't until the relative value of gold in, in relation to these other asset classes was showing strength. Even though we saw the price of gold fall in 2008 from a January high of when it first broke a thousand for the first time ever to a low of $680 in Q4 during the, the GFC, during the, the financial crisis. So gold was down you know, 30%, but other asset classes were down 80%, 90%. Um, so to answer your question, um, look, I think until we start to see um, some other asset classes fall, I don't think gold necessarily needs to be talked about because there are many, many things that are outperforming gold. You know, the the crypto community, the you know, the Bitcoin community can point to Bitcoin's outperformance. And, uh, you know, you don't have to stop there. We can talk about fine art. We can talk about uh, old Porsches. There's a number of asset classes that have, you know, taken gold's lunch here. Let's dig into one of the most critical factors driving this potential silver squeeze, the rapidly dwindling ground reserves. Experts are sounding the alarm that silver supplies are depleting at an alarming rate. In fact, the Silver Institute recently reported that we're looking at a market deficit of over 215 million ounces this year alone. To put that into perspective, that's the largest deficit since the 1990s, and it's not slowing down anytime soon. Underground silver reserves are being mined faster than they can be replaced, and the supply is simply not keeping up with demand. What does this mean for prices? Simple economics tells us that when supply shrinks and demand rises, prices are bound to skyrocket. And here's the kicker. While there may still be silver in the ground, the cost to extract it at current prices just isn't motivating sellers. So, even if silver prices go up, it might not be enough to get those reserves flowing back into the market, which means supply could dry up even more. It's becoming a vicious cycle. Less supply, higher prices, and even less silver available to meet the growing demand. We're not just talking about investment demand either. Industrial users are eating up silver at a staggering rate. In the next section... We'll explore how industries like solar energy are driving this unprecedented demand for silver and what that means for the market moving forward. I was uh, sitting down with a, with a friend, a mentor, a partner, Frank Juicer, yesterday. And, you know, Frank has, he's one of a handful of investors, uh, Lundin, Friedland, um, Lassonde, who have, you know, really been very successful, serially successful mining entrepreneurs. And Frank was telling me a story yesterday about um, writing an article uh, for a mainstream publication um, about why gold should be relevant. And this was seven years ago. And um, it was very, very difficult for the story to get picked up because it was so controversial. Um, talking about things that 
are talked about on CNBC today, are talked about in the mainstream press. Um, so I think we've gone from, you know, in, in the last seven years where it would be taboo to talk about some of the, you know, reasons to own gold, um, where they're starting to become mainstream and acceptable and recognized. But look, I think as long well, as we're in an environment where we've shrink. got the stock side of the indices at record highs, other asset classes at all-time highs and going higher, um, I don't think gold necessarily to needs to be front and center in the conversation. And that's primarily driven by industries you probably never imagined. Solar energy is one of the biggest consumers of silver today. Silver is a critical component in solar panels, and as the world pushes harder for clean energy, the demand for solar power is skyrocketing. In fact, the production of solar panels is growing so fast that even though manufacturers are reducing the amount of silver used in each panel, the overall demand for silver is still soaring. But it's not just solar energy. Silver is also crucial in electronics, electric vehicles, and even artificial intelligence. Think above it. From your smartphone to the electric car you drive, silver is everywhere. And as these technologies grow, so does the need for silver. This constant demand means that silver isn't just a precious metal. It's an industrial powerhouse. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Unlike gold, which is largely hoarded, silver is consumed. Once it's used in these industrial processes, it's gone. It doesn't just sit in vaults waiting to be sold again. It's literally off the market. This shrinking supply, coupled with booming demand, is creating the perfect storm for what could be the biggest silver squeeze in modern history. And as demand continues to rise in these key industries, it's only a matter of time before we see the effects on the silver price. In the next section, we'll dive deeper into the impact of this growing market deficit and what it could mean for silver prices in the coming months. Double mining also drives value to the bottom line. Uh, a great example of this is um, a company called Kirkland Lake with their swan zone in Australia. That swan zone drove $1.2 billion of value to one of our investors, Eric Sprott, and that money was then deployed throughout the industry, moving a lot of projects forward, including the $20 million Eric put into Dolly Varden to advance our Kitsell Valley project. So um, I think it is a stock picker's market. And, uh, you know, we've seen incredible growth from the large cap gold companies. I'm a shareholder of Newmont. Um, you know, companies trading at a 52 week high, uh, it's, you know, re record earnings, uh, Agnico Eagle, same thing. So the gold miners are performing extremely well. Gold's at record highs. Um, but I think we don't have the, um, the breadth, right? It is selective to a few names and, um, and the capital is there plentiful for a few names. I'll give you one example. We put up a deal. Um, we announced it on the 19th. Uh, we announced a $25 million deal, which for a company our size is just under the 10% dilution mark. You know, we're a $300 million company. We put up a $25 million deal. We could have closed on $75 million. That was the demand, right? We had we ended up trying to be thoughtful and being sensitive to dilution. So we'll, we're looking to close on 322 but for the right stories, there is record amounts of capital on the sidelines ready to go in. But, um, you know, the problem that we have is there's a ton of orphan deals that are out there that are struggling that the, the investing public is uncertain if they're going to get the needed capital to advance their project. Now, let's take a closer look at how this growing silver deficit is already impacting the market and why it's about to get much worse. In the past few years, we've seen a structural deficit in the silver market. For three years straight, demand has outpaced supply, and 2024 is shaping up to be the worst yet, with a shortfall of over 215 million ounces. To put that into context, we've never seen deficits this large in modern history. So what does that mean for the market? 
when supply can't meet demand, prices typically surge. But it's not just about simple economics. The shortage is different. Investors are starting to notice that silver is becoming harder to get, and those who own it aren't exactly in a rush to sell. Even as prices inch up, sellers are holding back, knowing that if they wait just a little longer, the payoff could be much bigger. But here's the kicker. The longer this deficit persists, the more pressure it puts on prices. And with no significant increase in supply on the horizon, this shortfall is likely to continue driving prices up throughout 2024 and beyond. It's the perfect setup for a historic price squeeze. In the next section, we'll explore how the investment demand for silver, which has been relatively weak in recent years, could suddenly shift, and why this could be a game-changer for silver prices. Look, I think there's, um, there's a number of ways to look at it. Uh, number one, you could argue that the miners were more profitable in 2020 than they are today, that the margins were better. Um, I think the numbers are, you know, uh, you know, 48% margins versus 40% margins if you compare the two periods of time. So you could argue that gold mining was more profitable four years ago with a gold price that was $400 an ounce lower than it is today. And so, um, and maybe that is an explanation why the equities haven't performed as well as the metal. Um, that's one way to look at it. But in terms of answering your question about the health of the industry, the industry has never been healthier from a standpoint of this is an industry that now across the board pays a dividend. Uh, it's run exceptionally lean. Um, the production profile is strong. Um, so, look, I think that you need to be a stock picker. You need to follow management teams and groups that have been successful. Uh, a great example is uh, a, a deal that was announced a few weeks ago, Osisco Mining. Uh, there's a group uh, with uh, Brzezinski and Rusin who have on multiple occasions, whether it was the sale of the Malartic asset um, or this recent sale of, uh, of Windfall, um, you know, they're doing it time and time again. And if you're an investor in the space and if you're in the right companies, um, I looked in our neighborhood in the Golden Triangle, just a little north of our project to an analog project uh, called SK Creek, a com uh, owned by a company called Skeena Resources. The week the Osisco deal was announced, Skeena went from eleven dollars, excuse me, seven dollars a share to eleven dollars a share. It was up about fifty percent in a trading week. So if I don't know where else you're going to make fifty percent a week on planet Earth, um, so this is a time where if you can identify which projects are next, and the the bet the market participants are making is. They're moving from one takeover candidate, Osisco Mining, to the next potential takeover candidate, Skeena Resources, the trickle down of funds. This is an industry that price isn't the only thing that's driving value in our sector. And this is what investors need to understand. Now, let's talk about the other side of the equation, investment demand. Surprisingly, Investment demand for silver has been relatively weak in recent years. In 2023 alone, silver investment demand dropped by 28%, and it's expected to decline another 13% this year. So why is this important? And why could this trend be about to reverse in a big way? Historically, silver has surged when investors pile in, and we've seen this happen twice before in 1980 and 2011. Both times, silver saw massive price spikes driven almost entirely by investment demand. But here's the thing. During those bull markets, industrial demand wasn't nearly as dominant as it is today. Now we have a situation where industrial consumption is eating up a huge portion of the available silver, leaving far less for investors. This is where things get really interesting. Right now, the gold-to-silver ratio is sitting at historically high 8 to 6 colon 1, signaling that silver is massively undervalued compared to gold. And seasoned investors know that when the ratio is this high, it's often the perfect time to buy silver. As the market adjusts and the ratio tightens, 
We could see a flood of investment pouring back into silver, just like it did in those previous bull runs. So what happens when investors wake up to the fact that silver is running out? We could see a wave of demand hit the market, on top of the already soaring industrial demand. And when that happens, prices could skyrocket. In the next section, we'll dive into Sean Kunkan's bold prediction for 2025, where he believes we'll witness the greatest silver squeeze in history. I'm starting to hear the most staunch uh, silver-centric bulls start to capitulate and start to throw in the towel and start to talk about how we won't, you know, the relation, the historic relationships won't go back. And um, it, it tells me that we are closer than we've ever been to that relationship normalizing. And, you know, look, uh, 54 to 1, um, you know, you talk about where that relationship has, has averaged. I just go, I go back to look, you know, I think about it in the sense that, you know, gold is, um, you know, everything that we've ever mined is still with us, whereas, whereas the silver gets consumed, it doesn't get recycled. And I, I sound like a bit of a broken record here, but if we're, if the natural relationship is 16 to 1, the mining relationship is 7 to 1, you know, and, and the, the gold to silver ratio is closer to 90 to 1, something's out of whack here. And uh, again, I, I just think that we're getting to a point with the price of gold where at some point the central bank buying will ease up. It won't continue on this trajectory. And right now, gold has priced itself out of the average buyer's hands. And it always has been historically, but it's on a relative basis. And it's why you see the masses in India in China going to silver. And this is where the, the real demand for, we've had zero demand out of the West for these metals, zero. Um, we we're starting to see a little bit come in recently in the last couple of months, but really what's driven these prices, I think since 2000 have been, it's been Eastern buying and it's been, uh, it's been central bank buying. Uh, and now we're starting to see it go on to Main Street in India, in China, and uh, you know, if we look at Q1 of this year in on silver, uh, 35% of silver demand came out of China, and it came out of solar. Uh, so a third of the market was taken up by those two entities. Now let's focus on one of the most eye-opening predictions from Sean Kumkun, CEO of Dolly Varden Silver. According to Kumkun, by the end of 2025 we're going to witness what he calls the greatest silver squeeze in history. What makes him so confident? Well, he's looking at a combination of rapidly increasing industrial demand and a critical shortage of supply that's unlike anything we've seen before. By 2025, Kumkun predicts that every ounce of silver mined annually, roughly 850 million ounces, will be consumed entirely by industrial demand. That's right. By the end of 2025, there could be virtually no silver left for investment purposes. Think about that for a moment. We're already seeing deficits in the hundreds of millions of ounces each year. And as industries like solar energy and electric vehicles continue to grow, that gap is only going to widen. Kunkan argues that this isn't just a temporary shortage. It's a structural shift that will reshape the silver market for years to come. And when investors realize that silver is disappearing faster than it can be mined, the rush to buy could push prices to record highs. We're not just talking about a minor price bump here. Kankan believes silver could hit levels we haven't seen in decades, potentially even surpassing its previous all-time high of nearly $1.50 per ounce. The big takeaway? If his predictions are correct, 2024 and 2025 could be the most pivotal years for silver investors in a generation. And as the squeeze intensifies, those holding silver could be in for monumental gains. But what role does China play in all of this? In the next section, we'll examine how China's massive demand for silver, particularly in renewable energy, could further tighten the supply 
and drive prices even higher. There has been a lot of work done in the neighborhood over the last 130 years. And all that work, you know, the more time you put into something, the more you understand it. And our understanding based on SK Creek and Premier and Bruce Jack and Red Chris, we know where to look for mineralization. We know, you know, what, you know, we call it the red line theory up in the Golden Triangle. And it was a theory that was developed by two very smart um, BCGS, BC geological um, geologists, uh, Jeff Kaiba and Joanne Nelson. And what they looked at was within the two kilometer unconformity of two ages of rocks is where the fluids came up and where the deposits were, uh, were formed. And so we know where to look. We know there's a repeating pattern. And where this is playing out on our project today is at the Wolf Deposit. So the Wolf Deposit is located about a kilometer and a half away from Canada's third largest silver producing mine throughout the 1950s, the Torbert Mine, which we also own, which we have a mineral inventory of almost 40 million ounces just at Torbert alone. So a kilometer and a half away, we try to test these theories Okay, theories that we've brought in, theories that others have had. And what we found is the silver mineralization is growing um, at a certain plunge, a certain dip, a certain periodicity along a contact. And we've been hitting it at an incredible rate. So what we're finding is we're finding 20, 30 meter wide high-grade silver mineralization. We just had a report out on the 12th of August where we drilled not over nine meters of over a thousand grams of silver. Brand new. When I talk about the 64 million ounces of silver that we have and the million ounces of gold we have, it doesn't factor in these new discoveries. And then we had another hit um, on the 19th of August where it was uh, 16 meters of 600 grams. So the bottom line is we've got this wolf deposit. It's growing. And what it's growing, Jesse, is a unicorn asset. It's growing a primary silver mine in a safe jurisdiction. Primary silver mines make up 28% of the market. Most silver gets produced as a byproduct. So finding a primary silver mine is super rare. Finding it in a safe jurisdiction is next to impossible. There's just a handful of these, and we happen to have a very large, very Robust. Let's talk about one of the biggest forces driving silver demand in the world today, China. China is already the largest consumer of silver for industrial purposes, and its appetite is only growing. In fact, in 2023, China's demand for silver in the renewable energy sector, particularly solar energy, accounted for over 90% of global solar panel shipments. And guess what? This trend is expected to continue and accelerate into 2024 and beyond. Why does this matter? Because silver is an irreplaceable component in solar panels. As China continues its aggressive push toward renewable energy, its demand for silver will keep rising, and the global supply simply can't keep up. This is especially important when you consider that China isn't just a major player in solar energy. It's also heavily involved in electric vehicles, electronics, and infrastructure, all of which rely on silver. As these industries boom, so does China's need for silver. But here's the real kicker. China's influence on the silver market isn't limited to industrial demand. Chinese investors are also starting to take note of silver's undervaluation. With the gold-to-silver ratio so high and the market deficit deepening, China could become a major buyer in the investment space as well. This combination of surging industrial use and potential investment demand could be a game-changer for global silver prices. If China's demand continues at this pace, it could further tighten the already strained silver supply and push prices to levels we haven't seen in years. And with global supply chains still recovering from disruptions, the pressure on silver could intensify even faster than expected. Next, we'll compare silver's potential bull run to what we've seen with gold in recent years and discuss why silver might actually outperform gold in the near future. Um, 
I have a vehicle for speculation. That's what, what Dolly Varden essentially is, right? That's what every equity is. Um, and, and essentially the company, uh, if it does nothing but give investors exposure to a rising silver price environment, you know, you know, and I experienced this in, in gold mining in the 2000s where, you know, my mentors and my bosses said to me, Sean, you could sit on your hands and do nothing. And these equities are going to go wildly higher. And, this, and the same is true for Dolly Varden. And the reason for that is Dolly has a past producing project that has a resource. Now, we've opted not to sit on our hands, Jesse. We've opted to be very active. Uh, we've raised $122 million in the last four and a half years. We've grown our resource count significantly. So we're now giving our investors exposure to a lot more than just the historic ounces that were left behind. And we've done that through acquisitions and discovery. So how Dolly Varden, how I'm trying to get Dolly Varden to fit in is I had a vision for the company. And the vision was I wanted to take this name that was a, an obscure, irrelevant, small name and my goal was to make it a top 10 silver equity. And I'm happy to report it's a top 30 silver equity today. So we're on our path to that goal of top 10. Well, how are we doing that? We're doing that by growing economic, high grade, safe jurisdiction, mineable ounces. And so the vision here is as the silver price continues to move higher, and I'm wildly bullish of where that we're going to end up, the enterprise value per ounce, the in situ value, the value of those ounces that were identified will go higher. We've already seen it happen. We've already seen, you know, multiple hundred percent increases in the in situ value in the company. And we've seen multiple hundred percent increases of the mineral inventory. You factor those two things together. And that's why the market cap of the company has grown from 20 million to 300 million. And um, so how, how I'm trying to position the company is I'm trying to create a bank of silver in the ground. And Jesse, when we have that moment, when we have that spike and it's coming, it, it always happens. It, it, it's happened in every bull market in, 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 the, in the history. We've, you know, we're having another moment and what's going to exaggerate this one is the pickup in industrial demand. Uh, at that point, Let's turn on this project. Let's 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 get it back into production. It was a mine. I think it once again will be. Now there's a multiple ways that we can do that. We can sell the company. We can develop it ourselves. Um, but in the meantime, let's continue to grow that mineral inventory. So that's how we're positioning to benefit ourselves, our investors, and our stakeholders from the coming bull market and so. Now. Let's take a moment to compare Silver's potential surge to the impressive bull run we've seen with gold over the past few years. Gold has been grabbing headlines as it hits all-time highs in multiple currencies, with central banks around the world stockpiling the precious metal as a safe haven. But while gold has been shining in the spotlight, Silver has been quietly building momentum. And here's the twist. Silver has the potential to outperform gold in the near future. Why? It all comes down to what we've been talking about, supply and demand. Unlike gold, silver is not just a store of value. It's also a vital industrial metal. And while gold has seen massive demand from central banks and investors, silver is facing a completely different dynamic, a supply squeeze driven by gloomy industrial use. What's more, the gold-to-silver ratio, currently sitting at 8 to 6 colon 1, suggests that silver is incredibly undervalued compared to gold. Historically, when the gold-to-silver ratio is this high, it tends to correct sharply, with silver often outperforming gold. During the last major bull market for precious metals, silver prices shot up far faster than gold. And here's the key point, in 2024 and beyond with silver supply shrinking and demand from both industry and investors rising, we could see silver making even bigger gains than its more famous cousin, gold. This isn't just speculation. There's a real precedent for silver to take the lead. Every time gold has surged, silver has followed, often with even greater velocity. As industrial demand continues to deplete silver supplies, 
and with investors likely to jump back into the market, silver is poised to deliver massive returns. But how could all of this lead to a historic price surge in 2024? In our final step, we'll break down why all these factors, supply shortages, surging demand, and undervaluation, are setting up silver for a monumental squeeze. Listen, we've had a history of making acquisitions. You know, we acquired the big bulk um, project last December. A year before that, we picked up Homestake. These have been uh, transformative. These have been accretive. This has led to the big growth in the company. Um, we've also had a track record of making discoveries. And so, look, we've got drill results pending. We have been monitoring some regional acquisitions. And so watch for us continue to grow, right? And I just got to shout out my team, um, whether it's the technical team, the communications team, the board of directors, the advisors, the shareholders, the stakeholders, um, you know, Dolly Varden is, uh, is, is, is running like a well-oiled machine right now. And um, we've got a lot of drilling. We've completed over 50 holes. We've only put out a handful of results. So drill results, drill results, drill results. And drill results have driven the value of the company. And um, so that's what's coming up. But also look for us to, um, to continue to evaluate and execute on M&A opportunities. Now, let's bring everything together. We've covered how silver is undervalued how supply is shrinking, and how industrial demand is surging. But why exactly is 2024 shaping up to be the year we witnessed the biggest silver squeeze in modern history? First, let's talk about the supply side. Ground reserves are rapidly depleting, and it's estimated that by the end of 2025, industrial demand alone will consume all of the silver that is mined annually. This means there will be little to no silver left for investors. Add to this the fact that investors holding silver aren't selling. They're waiting for prices to rise even higher. This creates a perfect storm of shrinking supply and hoarding, which is exactly what drives price squeezes. Now, on the demand side, we have booming industries like solar energy, electric vehicles, and electronics, all of which are consuming silver at unprecedented rates. As we've discussed, China's massive role in renewable energy alone is enough to strain global silver supplies. And remember, once silver is used in these industrial processes, it's gone. It doesn't sit in vaults like gold. But here's the real kicker. As this deficit grows in silver becomes harder to find, investor sentiment is expected to shift dramatically. Sean Kunkun's bold prediction that we'll see the greatest silver squeeze in history by 2025 is starting to look more and more realistic. Once investors realize just how tight the supply is, we'd see a flood of capital into silver, pushing prices to levels we haven't seen in decades, possibly even beyond the all-time high of $1.50 per ounce. Bottom line? The factors driving the silver market, dwindling reserves, Skyrocketing industrial demand and a looming investment demand shift are all converging. The silver squeeze isn't just a possibility. It's a likely outcome in 2024. If you're an investor looking for the next big opportunity, silver might just be the play that redefines your portfolio. But remember, this is not financial advice. Do your own research and make informed decisions. If you found this breakdown helpful, make sure to subscribe to stay updated on the latest trends in the silver market. And don't forget to leave a comment. What do you think will be the key factor driving silver prices in 2024? Really good question. This financing puts us in a position where we don't have to go back to market until 2026. So think about this. We're a silver growth company. Okay. We have no warrants. We have no debt. We've got some great shareholders. You know, Eric's at 10%, Heckler's at 15%, Fury's at 19%, Institution's at 48%. So you have 8% in the hands of the public. You've got a company. I just laid out a case of where I think silver's going and when I think it's going there. So my case for silver is between now and December of 2025, between now and next December, industri industry is going to consume all the silver that we mine. 
So the investment demand, where are we going to get? It's going to have prices have to go higher. They have to incentivize people that hold silver to give up their silver. Well, Dolly Varden, Jesse, doesn't need to print a share until we get into 2026. So for you as an investor, you've got a company here that's fully financed. You know, I'll be I'll be going down to Beaver Creek and Denver Gold with over forty million dollars in the bank, and we've got a, a very aggressive plan over the next two years where we don't need to print another share. And so any growth that we have to the mineral inventory or the price of silver moving higher is not going to be absorbed in any dilutive financing. We're fully financed, and I think that's a differentiator, and that it puts. You know, puts us in a different class of company. We're going to grow. We're going to be lean. We're going to make discoveries. And um, I think it, 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 you know, listen, Dolly Varden is the culmination of a 20 year career, of 20 year relationships. And it's taking everything that I've learned, every mistake I've learned, and trying to maximize what I think is a once in a lifetime moment in silver in precious metals investing, in commodity equity investing. Equity, commodity equities have never been uh, more inexpensive relative to commodity price in history. So I think this is the greatest value opportunity for the investor. And I think this, and it's not unique to silver. You know, we've seen it play out in other commodities, most recently uranium. Um, but what's But I think this move that's coming in silver is going to be like that move we had in uranium, but only on steroids. So I'd say it's an an incredible opportunity. Gold's leading the way. And um, yeah, I'm just wildly bullish. And And if you go back and if you look at some videos that I put out in September of 2022 or uh, September of 2023, and you look at what our share price has done. You know, we were 40 cents a share in uh, 35 cents a share in September of 2022. You know, we're over a dollar a share today. You know, we're, we haven't done a down round of financing. We've accessed capital. We've made discoveries. We've grown the mineral inventory. Uh, the team has executed. And, uh, and now we're moving into a market that I think it's rewarding Ignico. It's rewarding Newmont. It just went down market and rewarded Osisco Mining. It's rewarding Skeena Resources. I think we're next.